I was yelling to God, you are not a just God. You don't care what is happening to me. I'm so sick and tired of my life. Finally, I say that if you are the true God, come and take my life. If not, let me die here. I don't want to wake up. Iran before the revolution it was really a quiet country, very peaceful. When the Islamic revolution happened in 1979, I left Iran and moved to Denmark. The very first day when I came to Denmark, it was snow falling, cold, very cold. And I was sitting in my room all alone, crying, really crying, literally crying, and called my mom. I said, Mom, I want to come back home. I really want to come back home. I don't want to stay here. I cannot stay here. I will die here. And she said, that if you come here, you will die here too. So you better stay there. I tried to feel the loneliness by making myself busy and uh, making money. I had a house in Bali, Indonesia. Didn't make me happy. In order to find Allah, I start to go to mosque, uh, doing salat five times a day, but found no Allah. And then I went to other religion, Buddhist and Hinduism, Krishna, name it. But uh, no God, but still, the feeling of loneliness and emptiness was there. Uh, my neighbor back in Bali, Indonesia, they were really unbelievably nice and loving. The first day, they knocked my door and uh, came with food and tried to make friendship with me. They also tried to get me into church Church for Muslim is a hidden place. The more I turned them down, the more they loved me purely, unconditionally. And finally, I gave up. I said, OK, and I want to see that what your Jesus want to do to me. Can he get me out of this misery? When I came in the church, I saw this guy. Now he told to whole congregation, 4,000 people, you will be touched by God in different way. Everyone was touched, but not Abraham. Nothing happened. And I was telling to myself that, Abraham, you are a very, very bad guy. That's why God is not touching you. But the more I, w I turned him, him down, the more he loved me. I mean, it was really a strange love. So finally I said, okay, your Jesus couldn't do anything today. Let me see what he, he wanna do to me tomorrow. And next day, exactly the same way. And this time I was really furious. I was really angry with myself and I was angry with God. And I was so angry with God that I went right in front of the pulpit and lay down as dead man. I was yelling to God, you are not a just God. I'm seeking to find you for years and years, but it seems that you don't care. If you are the true God, come and take my life. If not, let me die here. I don't want to wake up. After 10 minutes, I heard a voice. Abraham, you don't want your life. I will take your life for my glory. I felt hands start to touch my head. I thought that some of these 4,000 people felt sorry for me and came to me just to give me comfort. I opened one of my eyes, seeing that who is this? Nobody here, this side. And that I opened my left eye, nobody here. And when I open my eyes and try to stand on my feet. I couldn't stand on my feet. And the whole church was empty. And I was born again.
at that day. God made us in such a way with vacuum that only God can fill it. No money, no children or mother or father. Only God himself need to feel that. And this same Jesus is now visiting Muslims. Before the revolution in 1979, Iran had only a handful Christians. 35 plus years after the, the revolution, we have more than two and a half million Iranian Christians. Years after I become Christian and my view of uh, Jewish people changed dramatically. I love them with all my heart. I respect them highly. We, the Gentiles, we grafted in to the tree, but they are the branches. I truly believe that uh, God has a steel plan for uh, Israel. And my advice to Christian, do not give up. Keep on loving people. You don't know what is happening. The Jewish or Muslim, they turn you down, but don't give up. You don't know what is happening in their heart. You have to be patient. You are dealing with human soul and continue to love people unconditionally. I am one for his